going to be easy. But I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. Somebody needs to tell him, thank you, Lord, for everything you brought me through. Thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for me. Glory to the Lamb of God. That's just a little introduction. Glory to the Lamb. We had a, a office has been going through something that God wants to heal you from this. You know, God is not going to forsake you. Sometimes you go through the battle and the enemy will tell you that God just doesn't care where you're at. He doesn't care about what you're going through or your affliction. But he said this light affliction, which is just for a moment, works a far more exceeding and eternal weight for you in glory. So we don't go through things and God doesn't know about them. Amen. But I want you to be in prayer with me as I preach this message tonight. I don't know how exactly the Lord's going to wind it up, but he's in charge of it. Amen? Amen. So for the reading of the word, we're going to start with verse 41 and go through verse 50. The Bible says, And he cometh the third time, meaning the Lord, and saith unto them, Sleep all now and take your rest. It is enough that the hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up and let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. And immediately while he hath spake, cometh Judas, one of the twelve. And with him a great multitude with swords and staves and chief priests and scribes and elders. How many know that's some of the Christians today? And he that betrayed him hath given them a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Take him and lead him away safely. And as soon as he has come, he goeth straightway to him and saith, Master, Master, and he kissed him. And they laid their hands on him and they took him. And one of them that stood by drew a sword, which we know is Peter, and smote a servant at the, of the high priest and cut off his ear because he had great anger. And Jesus answered and said unto them, are ye come out as against a thief with swords and with staves and to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and you took me not. But the scripture must be fulfilled. And verse 50 said, And they took him, and they all forsake him, and fled. Will you bow your heads with me, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight as a humble vessel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we ask you tonight that you would take this word, God, and that you would pierce the hearts of your people. And Father, that there would come a supernatural healing in this house tonight. Father God, we ask you, Lord, everything be done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the church said, Amen. Amen. I want to preach to you tonight a message that the Lord gave me to bring here called the power of betrayal. The power of betrayal. How many knows? What it means to be betrayed in this house tonight. Oh, yeah. The Bible says in Matthew 27, it said, When Judas had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he seized with remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief and the elders. He said, I have sinned. He said, I have betrayed the innocent blood. What does it mean tonight to be betrayed? It means a violation of someone's trust. Something false or someone to be disloyal to you. To give aid or information to the enemy. To break a breach of confidence. Has anybody ever had that in this house happen to them? The Lord said you will be speaking to someone tonight about the power of being betrayed. Someone in this building tonight has felt so empty and so lost and so betrayed and so alone. And it has taken over your life. The Bible said in Luke 22, verse 48, it said, But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betray thou son of man with a kiss. Can I tell you tonight that one kiss from the enemy can turn you and destroy your life. Amen? Amen. And that kiss that Judas brought to Christ was the power to take him to Calvary. But it wasn't the power that kept him at Calvary. What kept him at Calvary was love and forgiveness. Come on, stay with me, we're going somewhere tonight. Yeah. It's a stronghold from the enemy that tries to bind up and hinder your life. Satan thought that he could do away with Christ by that one kiss. But all that kiss done was gave Christ power, amen? That piece of silver and that piece of money that he 
traded his life for soon meant nothing to him. Amen. You're right. It soon lost its value tonight. Yeah. What people betray Christ for and what they turn around on him for today will soon lose its value. Will soon money will soon lose its value. You will you will not look at it the same. Amen. You can be saved and you can turn around on Christ. And you can give up what you got for this world or its money. But sooner or later, this world and this money will lose its value to you. It will lose its, its sight to you. You won't care about it anymore. Amen? Amen. Amen. But not so because Christ had the power to forgive inside of him. He had been betrayed by one who had sat with him. Listen to what Luke said about Judas. He said, Behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is sitting with me. Sometimes the ones we get portrayed, betrayed by are our closest friends. Yeah. But you know what? God gave him also the power to forgive him. Proverbs 27 and 6 says this. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses are of the enemy are deceitful. Amen. That's right. Wow. He said to him, no man can take my life. No man can cause you to backslide tonight. Jesus said, I give my life freely. I have the power to give it and I have the power to take it up. Amen. What you allow, the Lord said, to stay in your life will take your life captive. Amen. That's why Christ said we have to be overcomers tonight. Amen. He said, in this world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Tonight, he wants you to know that it does not matter who betrayed you in this house. It does not matter who betrayed you in your life, who you felt betrayal from, whether it was your family, whether it was your friends. It doesn't matter who you felt betrayed of. God said tonight in this house, he wants you to give it to him and let it go. Listen to me, church. He said, even as Peter betrayed him three times, he forgave him. Peter went to him humbly and he said, Lord, how many times do I have to do this? Did you ever feel like that? I know I'm not the only one that feels like that. He said, Lord, how many times do I have to do this? Just seven times? And the Lord said, nope. He said, well, how many times then, Lord? He said, 70 times 70. Now, when we get in trouble by, you know, get betrayed by someone and we feel all troubled, you know, we want to sing that gloom, despair, and agony on me. Poor me. Poor me. Woe is me, for I am undone. We, we get so pitiful. We get feeling so sorry for ourselves. But God said tonight, he said, you have to forgive and let it go. That's right. Can you imagine what Peter did when he walked away from Christ? He probably said, I can't believe he wants me to go 490 times a day, man, crying around. But you know what? If Peter hadn't got that spirit of forgiveness down in his heart, Jesus could have never used him to be the first church. Right. See, God wants to use some of you in this house tonight. And he said, you will not let go of things that have happened to you in your life. And you will not let go of the bitterness and the hurt and the trouble. And he said, I can't take you any farther than you are right now because you are holding spirit of betrayal. And he said he wants to give you the victory in this house tonight. Yeah. Greatness comes through forgiveness. Yeah. Power comes through forgiveness. Yeah. You say, oh, well, you, don't, you don't look like you've ever been hurt. Hey, I've been hurt. And church hurt sometimes, Pastor Bobby, is the worst hurt. Yes, Jesus himself, I was wounded right in the house with my friends. Right with the people that I thought that loved me and cared about me. And said, you know, Jesus, we'll follow you. We left our mother and our father. We left fishing boats. We left ships. We left all of this stuff behind us. And yes, we'll follow you. But Judas gave it all up for 30 pieces of silver. What are you giving it up for tonight? Oh, yeah, come on. We're going somewhere. Yeah. Christ anointed Peter to do the greatest work in the new church. There are some of you here tonight that he said, if you do not let it go, you will carry this with you to your grave. Wow. He said, you must forgive. To forgive is to understand that what is going on in your life really doesn't matter. Uh -huh. That's right. 
When you stand before Christ, it's not going to matter anymore who hurt you. It's not going to matter who offended you. I've been lied on, as that song says, been talked about, cheated, mistreated, abused, been torn. Hallelujah. Talked about for serving the Lord. I get called a holy roller. I said, what an honor. Yes, ma'am. What an honor. Yeah. My husband will say, if I get home early, well, it must have been dry. If I'm home late, you must have been in the floor. I'm glad he knows the difference. Amen.
Somebody sitting in this house tonight has been betrayed Come on. to a deep, deep, deep wound. Uh -huh. But God said, I'm going to heal that in this house tonight. Amen. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. He said, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of the mind, meekness and long suffering. Forbearing one another, forgiving one another. Any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Amen. You don't have a choice. All right. You don't have a choice tonight. You have to forgive. Amen. If you've been beaten, Come on. if you've been abused, uh -huh. if you've went through childhood sufferings, uh -huh. I don't care what it is tonight. God said, you're going to have to let it go. Because he said, if you want to be in me, and I'm in you, you've got to act like me. Showing love. Love ye one another. That was one of the greatest commandments. First, you have to love the Lord thy God with all your heart. And then you have to love one another. Let me tell you what will happen when you love one another. When you love him that's betrayed you. When you love him that's been mean to you and angry to you. When you begin to love and let go. You'll see one of the greatest revivals in the church that the church has ever seen. I can tell you tonight why there's no revival, there's no love. <laughs> but when I connect with you and you connect with me. And if I've hurt your feelings, I can come to you and say, I'm sorry. <laughs> I did not mean to do that. <laughs> or if you hurt something that I said that I shouldn't say, and you can come to say me, and I can say, please forgive me. When we get forgiveness and love in the body of Christ, then unity will come back in the body of Christ, and the church will begin to sing a new song, we'll begin to have a new spirit, and we'll begin to have revival like we've never seen revival again. Amen. How many goes back to the first time when you got saved?
He went down in the field and he drank a cup of coffee and had it on the post. I stood and looked out the bedroom window. I said, Lord, I can't stand him. I said, I don't know how much longer I'm going to live like this. I said, I just don't know what I'm going to do. All of a sudden, I know now what got a hold of me. But the Holy Ghost hit me in the top of my head and went through my body. I went to the closet. I got out of dress. I hung it on the door while I started getting ready for church. There was a power that overcame me that was stronger than me. My mom was probably sitting in the little Pentecostal church saying, Lord, if you'll just bring Vonda back to the Lord. God 